Today we're going to explore the ancient art of why men always seem to come back when you ignore them. Now there's a lot to explore here with why ignoring a man often makes them want to come back. This is actually something that we've noticed upon interviewing our success stories. People who've come through our program and successfully gotten their exes back. We noticed typically after they quote unquote got over their exes, their exes seemingly wanted them back. And we went through many years of trying to understand why this phenomenon occurred. We sometimes took some wrong turns and made wrong assumptions, but we believe that we finally understand why ignoring a man seems to work to make them want to come back. Now, you can't talk about ignoring a man or ignoring an ex without first talking about the concept of a no contact rule. Oftentimes, ignoring and no contact have become so synonymous with one another that they're kind of the same thing. So, what is a no contact rule? Simply put, a no contact rule is a period of time where you are ignoring your ex on purpose. Now, the intent of this tactic should never be used to make an ex miss you, but rather should be used to outgrow your ex so that by the time you end up do reaching out to them and do try to talk to them, they're a lot more interested in talking to you first. But it's kind of counterintuitive. Why would ignoring an ex actually make them want to come back to you? Well, the most obvious lowest hanging fruit is the theory of reactance. Psychologically, there's this concept called reactance, where basically we are all born or have inherent behavioral freedoms. But when one of those freedoms becomes threatened or someone threatens to take it away, guess what happens? We react in a way to try to get that freedom back. So oftentimes, just the simple fact that you are ignoring your ex taps into the psychological concept of reactance, but that really doesn't explain the full story. Oftentimes, we find that most of the exes who have a no contact rule done to them are actually not going to reach out to you. So what's going on here? Well, we think probably the best place to start is by understanding the dynamic nature between avoidant attachment styles and anxious attachment styles. We know from interviewing many clients and watching their exes that most of our clients tend to have anxious type of behaviors. They're the ones who after a breakup will blow their ex's phone up, try to beg for them back, go online searching for advice to try to win them back. These are all examples of anxious type of behaviors. Now what's interesting is oftentimes anxious attachment style types are really attracted to avoidant attachment style types, yet there's a huge disconnect between the two. But by understanding why ignoring a man tends to work to make them want to come back, we can actually understand this by looking at avoidant attachment style traits. Look. The first thing you need to understand is that avoidant types have a tendency to romanticize past lovers or idealize yet to be found future lovers, as both concepts keep true vulnerability at a safe distance. The big misconception people have when it comes to avoidant attachment styles is that they don't ever want any type of intimacy or any type of long-term relationship. In fact, if you were to actually interview an avoidant, you would find it's the exact opposite. They want nothing more than for that to happen. But Oftentimes, when someone gets close to them, it freaks them out because they feel their independence is going to be forever threatened. So what do they do? They simply push that person away. Yet, that doesn't mean they won't miss that person. In fact, oftentimes, sometimes the mere act of pushing someone away with enough time causes the avoidant to miss them more or idealize or romanticize or have these extreme bouts of nostalgic reverie. Why? Well, simply put, it's safer for them to uh, admire from afar than it is to admire from up close. So what happens when you're using sort of any type of no contact tactic or you're ignoring your ex is you're actually giving them that natural space that they need to begin to idealize you, to begin to have those extreme bouts of nostalgia. And that's when they begin to kind of look at you in a more favorable light. So if you actually begin to contact them while they're looking at you in this more favorable light, guess what happens? Yep, they kind of want to come back to you. 
So now that you have a basic understanding of why ignoring your ex or ignoring a man can help make them want to come back to you, let's switch gears and talk about some of the actionable items that you can sort of implement to improve the odds of having this happen, assuming you're in a situation where you are ignoring your ex. Hey there, real quick, I want to say that if you're new to this YouTube channel or you're trying to figure out what you should be doing to get your ex back and you're trying to learn if you even have a chance in your specific circumstance, probably the smartest thing for you to do is actually stop by our website www.exboyfriendrecovery.com or take our ex recovery chances quiz that can be found at exboyfriendrecovery.com. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, taking that free quiz is super easy to do. All you have to simply do is look in the description link below this YouTube video and click on the link you see there. It will take you directly to the quiz where you can fill it out and get an easy answer on what you should be doing going forward and overall what your chances look like in your specific situation. All right, so let's get you back to the video. So my first tip is that it's not just enough to ignore your ex. You actually need to show them that you're moving on. I started ex-boyfriend recovery in 2012 and immediately when we first started dissecting what works to win exes back, we stumbled across the no contact rule. The no contact rule at the time was not really written about a lot. You actually go to Google now and see millions of articles about the no contact rule. It's become one of the most popular strategies there is, but simply by understanding that just merely 10 years ago, when people talked about the no contact rule, they didn't look past much more than the fact that the no contact rule was supposed to be this implemented strategy that can make your ex miss you. By manipulating silence or by ignoring your ex, they'll miss you. But when we actually got more data, we actually found out what really works. What we found is what matters more than anything during the no contact rule is that you have this mindset shift within yourself internally. You get over your ex, you outgrow them. And then when you're in that space, you begin to talk to your ex, you'll find the results are a lot different. And this actually does make sense when you consider avoidant psychology. We know from dealing with avoidance that typically someone with an avoidant attachment style is not going to miss you immediately after a breakup. It's not until they feel safe that they're going to miss you. And the only way they actually feel safe is if you guessed it, they feel like there's no chance of ever getting you back. And this can be done if they actually see you moving on. So we actually advise our clients to do things during the no contact rule to indicate to your ex that you're moving on. Now there are a few special situations where that's not a good idea, but generally speaking, for a general situation, you're gonna wanna do things through a social media or do things just internally to show your ex that you're moving on, to show them that you're not hung up on them. The next big tip I would have is the concept of outgrowing your ex, specifically the concept of the magnum opus, living for something more than your ex. Now this is in here because most of the clients and most of the people who are probably watching this YouTube video have anxious tendencies. They are the ones who, again, blow their ex's phone up after a breakup, show up at their work trying to get their ex back. Their whole identity is wrapped up into this relationship and their world will not become normal until they fix this one problem. Yet the irony is the only way to potentially fix that one problem is to move on from your ex. Find a way to shift your ex so that they're not your first priority. This is oftentimes where you'll hear me talk about the magnum opus concept. Now, what is a magnum opus? Well, it's kind of like your life's work. It's something that you're remembered for when you die. There's a lot of different magnum opus examples, but here are a few of my favorites. For the band Queen, it would be Bohemian Rhapsody. For someone like Stephen King, it would be the Dark Tower series. For George R.R. R. Martin, you have Game of Thrones. For J.R.R. Tolkien, you have Lord of the Rings. These are all examples of these artists' masterpieces. You can literally take the magnum opus concept and apply it to every aspect of your life. You know, like an athlete, like Tom Brady would be all of the Super Bowls that he's won. For Michael Jordan, it would be the fact that he's never, ever lost an NBA Finals matchup. These are all examples of perfect magnum opuses, but also examples of people who really focus so intensely on one thing 
that they achieved greatness. And what's kind of counterintuitive about this is the same obsession that you have with your ex, we're trying to get you to focus into some other aspect of your life that gives you meaning. Now, meaning can be derived in many different ways, but here's ultimately what happens. Assuming you are able to focus your life in one of these other areas, your ex will take notice because number one, you're not obsessed with them anymore, and number two, they're no longer your top priority. And this is oftentimes one of the things that someone with an avoidant attachment needs to see in order to romanticize their time together with you. So the million dollar question is how do you achieve a magnum opus? Like how do you structure your time? And this is something that I personally struggle with a lot. You've heard me talk a lot in the past about this concept called the Holy Trinity. Oftentimes I'll say really the biggest aspects of your life can be divided into three categories, health, wealth, and relationships. And what you're constantly trying to do is find a way to balance each throughout every single day so that you're spending efficient time on your health, on your wealth, and on your relationships. By simply doing this, you kind of spread your time out so that your ex is no longer your first priority. You're spreading that time out into other areas. But the longer I've kind of been on this earth, the more I realize that there's maybe a hidden category that we're not talking about. I still agree that health, wealth, relationships, the Holy Trinity concept is important when you're looking at time management aspects. But what's missed is this magnum opus concept. I suppose an argument can be made that there's a fourth category, health, wealth, relationships, and the magnum opus category. Trying to find that one thing that you wanna be remembered for, that you wanna have a legacy for. Now, the reason it seems like we've gotten off topic here is because notice none of this has anything to do with any kind of conversation you're ha gonna have with your ex or anything like that. This is all about how you're spending your time. You're not spending it just on your ex, you're spending it on all these other fantastic areas of your life. So what I've been trying to do lately in my life is divide my time into four distinct categories. Health, so today I went on a three mile run. I've torn my meniscus recently, which is never a fun issue to have when you have a knee problem, but I've been getting back into it and rehabbing it, so I went on a three mile run. Health has been checked off. Wealth, I'm doing that right now as I work. I spent maybe three hours so far today working on writing articles, solving support issues, setting up the people who work for me to do certain tasks, creating content that's going to get shared different places, this all helps wealth because oftentimes, weirdly enough, my wealth is dictated by how much I can solve other people's problems. So that's check. Relationships, pretty much all the time I spend with my relationships is spent either with my wife or my daughter. And usually that's anywhere between two to three hours a day, but then, as my wife takes my daughter up to bed, I start writing a book. Something that's completely different than what I'm doing here with breakups and relationships and psychology. But it gives me meaning and purpose and it makes me feel like, you know what, I'm not gonna have any regrets in my life if I'm able to write this novel, this thing that I've always wanted to do. And so, every single day, while it may sound boring, I feel I lived an incredibly privileged life if I'm able to check off those four distinct categories. Health through runs, wealth through working, relationships through spending time with my family, and my magnum opus, the thing I wanna be remembered for, and sort of that hidden thing that just gets me excited, writing a novel. And I do that every single day. And the funny thing is, as no matter how hard I try, I'm never able to balance every single category perfectly. There's always something that gets missed out or left out. Sometimes if I wanna work really hard or have a huge problem I need to solve at work, health gets neglected. I can't make time for a run. Sometimes I get so into working out that I neglect relationships or wealth, those things don't work. And same thing with the magnum opus. Sometimes I'll get an idea and I'll be so struck that I don't want to do anything else except work on that. And then everything else suffers. But I always noticed my best days when I go to bed at night and feel like, okay, I earned the sleep today. It's always those days when I got very close to balancing each and every individual category of my life. So my argument for you is these are the type of things or thoughts that you need to be having if you want to try to get your ex back. It's not enough just to ignore them anymore. You also have to do something productive with your time to show them that you're moving on from them. Hey there.
there, I just want to say thank you so much for getting to the end of this video. If you haven't already, make sure you take that X recovery chances quiz that I talked about earlier in this video. If you didn't realize, it's just simply in the description link below this YouTube video. Click the link you see there. It will take you directly to the quiz page area where you can fill it out and we'll give you sort of an idea of where you stand with your ex. Also, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so. I would really appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time.